characters are one of the most important aspects of any good gacha game. It's what makes money. So today, let's do a dive deep into one of Genshin's most beloved units both in gameplay and in lore. Today, I want to understand why Venti's character arc is considered to be one of the best written stories in the whole game, and provide insight on what certain tropes he uses to subvert expectations and keep the plot rolling. And if you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing. But without further ado, welcome to why Venti is one of the best written characters in Genshin Impact. Let's begin with his introductions and what first impressions are of him in-game. The timing of when we actually meet Venti plays an important part in why he's memorable. Characters you meet in the beginning of the story tend to stick a lot more than ones you meet in the future, because this is your first time being introduced to an archetype in the franchise. This is why we have Canadian Aether in Child 2.0. Monsat's characters actually have that edge over Inazuma and Liwen characters. Venti is introduced to us as the stereotypical, rebellious, cheerful, has little regard for laws or authority, chaotic good, and sarcastic character playing closely to the archetypes of Shincho, Yuhu Tao, and Goimiya. Venti shows us a lot about Mondstadt that other characters can't because of their own moral obligations, and him being untethered to those immediately differentiates himself as a more unorthodox and free-spirited character, like breaking and entering into the damn cathedral and even lying to Barbara about fixing the instrument. Venti shows us the freedom we normally associate the word with, unrestricted and unbound by regulations, which is the most surface level of freedom. And of course, with his little antics and quips, he lets us channel our more chaotic side by being a literal enabler. And when he is revealed to be the animal Archon, those actions even become more ironic because one, he's the first ever Archon we've met and this is the kind of character he is? Wonder what the other Archons are like. And two, you have a lot of characters talk about how amazing Barbados is and there's even a whole church and a statue just to worship him. And then you hear Venti steals from the Dawn Winery on a weekly basis. Subverting expectations keeps the audience guessing, and when an audience is surprised, it gives more room for thinking and investment from the audience because they will constantly wonder what are they up to next. Conversations with Venti with this added context also adds a spice of intent to them. Venti and Diluc's friendship is even more hilarious because their literal god has a debt to pay, Jean might actually be losing it, and Barbara's devotion is given an extra bit of irony because we know what kind of character Venti's like around us. But of course, a funny comedic relief wouldn't be enough for me to consider him as one of the best, because we know that Venti's true story lies in his past. Venti is beloved because he shows his humanity and how he's still healing. A good character story is different from a good character development arc. A backstory must recontextualize and explain their actions and dialogue, because a backstory has their motivations, morals, and reasons for doing what they do. A backstory doesn't justify present actions by any means, but a well-executed past must expand on the character we see today. The question to be answered is, so what? So what if we know who they used to be? Venti shows us the importance and impact of a great backstory. His striving character story is his cope with grief. We know that though he acts all juvenile, he still carries his loss heavily. This actually recontextualizes a lot of his past actions in both the manga and the game. His fear of losing people in the past was what made him desperate to save Devalin from the abyss. Out of all the current gods we know, he also has a great understanding of familial and friendships as seen with how he emphasizes the importance of people spending time together and making memories in the windbloom. He also weaves the names of people into his ballads because he doesn't want people of the past to be forgotten. He takes the form of his friend so that the nameless bard is forever immortalized. It's subtle moments like this that make you realize how much the bard's death truly impacted Venti's personality even after several centuries. Another implication of his backstory is how it recontextualizes his interaction with Senora, a person who also experienced heavy loss. This shows you that good character moments don't need to be shoved down the narrative, just given more light and context that helps you connect the dots. His story of coping is also one that's very realistic. Whereas Senora used revenge, he used alcohol to forget his past, which is unfortunately a very real perspective, and shows a more human side of Venti past all the smiles. The second part of his backstory is his origins as a god, or rather his rebellious nature in regards to Celestia. We know Barbados isn't one to completely abide by the image of a god and understands freedom more than anyone else, but we've seen time and time again that he also expresses his opinion of Celestia. Barbados, as a character, shares the potential future sentiments the Traveler may have with Celestia, 
especially since he knows a lot more than what he says. Barbados also knows what happens in both the Archon War and the Cataclysm, and have expressed his more somber opinions when asked about Celestia's ascension process. Out of all the characters in the story that would have an impact in the future, Barbados is one of the most important out of all of them. His history and displeasure with Celestia, as well as his evident, rebellious nature, are what makes him stand out from other units in the game. But his relationship with Celestia opens a more dreadful realization if you consider his interactions from other characters. Certain relationships start feeling different because of revelations of Barbados' past actions as an Archon. The art of a secret identity subverts a lot of expectations because it gives the audience the question, who is the real character and who is the act? That, coupled with just how important Barbados' past actions are to the current plot of Genshin, give him an air of mystery that not a lot of characters in Genshin can pull off. And Venti knows that he's mysterious. He even expresses his displeasure towards a traveler being able to read him like a book. Venti is a morally gray unit with unideal quirks and actions, and isn't afraid to throw the narrative on its head if he so desires. He admits that the stories of Barbados he sings are lies. He pilfers from the Dawn Winery and has a way of manipulating people through words. But even if he in universe is unpredictable, as a fictional character, Venti is very consistent with his backstory, his personality, and his characterization. Venti claims that Mondstadt's problems are theirs to deal with, but Venti is willing to drop the act when the time needs him to reveal himself and will not abandon Mondstadt for any reason as we've seen with Ursa and Devalin. Being in character is necessary, so people don't feel a whiplash when the character subverts expectations. And because Venti was carefully crafted to be this mysterious yet lovable character with a disguise, he becomes an unreliable narrator and players wonder if there's just a little bit more to him. Complexity in a game like Genshin is a breath of fresh air, and Venti, while still being the lovable idiot, is still perfectly imperfect. Venti is loved because he is consistent but not stagnant, and we know we can feel emotional investment for a character that's lovably crafted. The true irony is that despite being a god, Venti feels so human. Or at least, that's what he wants you to believe.